yeah, unpacking. What do we have and what, what would we keep and what would we get rid of? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Any ideas before we unpack? My switch. You the 10 day switch. <laughs> We are back in England because uh, Charlie obviously looks very warm. <laughs> the temperature is most definitely a big difference. It's very cold here in England. So we've been back about two days and by the time you're watching this, we've probably been back for about 10 weeks. But the journey wasn't too bad actually. We've done two, we done two flights. The one from Laos to Bangkok or Vientiane to Bangkok was quite tight and squished and then we had a couple of hours then going from Bangkok straight to London and that was very very cushy. We can confirm that booking a aisle seat and a window seat definitely works for a couple so get on that. Moving on. What we took with us. So when we initially left we done some research we're like oh 40 litre bags 40 litre bags is mine and Rosie's <laughs> and the dog's here hey little man <laughs> 40 litre bags to make it hand luggage and you can put it on everywhere easy don't have to pay for luggage but that's a bit of a lie so a lot of the airlines in Southeast Asia if you want to take on Hand luggage is free, but only seven kilograms. And most of your bags will be way above. I think mine most of the time is about 14, and most is about 13. So we took the 40 litre bags, and then one travel bag with us for personal items. Um, mine did, was only yeah. small. I got it cheap. I think this one's like 15 litres. And that, fit, that was mostly for when we travelled with laptops, cameras, everything like that, that we can put in our big bags, and also day trips for like beach towels um, and stuff like that, water. Yeah, so if you was watching from the beginning, you'll see that my bag changed halfway through. Uh, what happened to my bag? I think it broke. It broke, so I got this one in Laos and I straight away got it dirty. Um, yeah, ideally you just get a bag that is going to be comfortable and it's... Yeah. Good. Don't worry about getting ones that are foldable just purely we, because yeah. you, you don't fold it. We bought the Osprey like £20 foldable ones and because they've got no like back support where they've got no like rigidity at all, they're just really uncomfortable and you don't want to wear them really. Yeah, no. Don't worry about saving space for that, just get a normal bag and you're going to use it. Yeah, and I, I also would think about the price of the backpack. So if you're going to go with one, don't worry about how cheap or how expensive they are. Yeah, so yours was how much? So mine's the four class, uh, pretty like loads of people I saw had these and I think mine was about 45, 50 pounds uh, and it done the job. It's been fine. Um, loads of pockets, yeah. holds everything. Um, and yeah, I didn't really worry too much about getting an expensive bag and it was fine. Uh, the only thing I'd say with these is lots of travellers do have these so maybe attach something so you know it's yours when getting off boats and ferries because lots of people do have these ones so maybe have something to make it a bit easier to find. Yes. My one however, I went for an expensive one and it, <laughs> it was about £130. It's a tall one, if that's how you pronounce it. It does have loads, I wanted it because it has loads of pockets and whatnot but I think this part which is quite bulky kind of gets in the way of it. I, yeah, I personally probably wouldn't have got this looking back. In hindsight, I'd say don't worry about getting a small 40 litre bag. Go for a big 60, 65 yeah, yeah. and have a lot more room, a lot more space and don't do what we did where we're fighting with our bags every time we move somewhere to close them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So top pockets, what do I have in mind? This is interesting. Like I said, this one was cheap, but it's got such a big top pocket. I was able to fit in a whole packing cube full of like random odd bits. So originally this packing cube in the top had towels and swimming stuff, so it was easy to get, but my towels were so dirty 
We just threw him away. We actually um, watched another YouTuber recommend it. So we were like, oh yeah, like it takes off sand, it does really well. And it's the shittest towel yeah, ever. So if you, we, we put a yeah. picture or whatever, but don't get that one. Okay, so it. in my top pack and cube, it was odd bits and bobs. Um, so sink stopper. Yes, I've still got mine. These were like two pounds, one pound off Amazon. And they were at the start really helpful. So for doing your own laundry, stick it in the sink. Lots of them don't have plugs. You can fill it up, put some detergent in, hand wash everything. I'd say keep those. They fold up easy and they're pretty handy. Yeah. Yeah. Face wipes or cleansing wipes. We took these. <laughs> I haven't opened them. At I all. think I think the the premise of it for us was if we're not showering and we need to clean ourselves to use them. But everywhere that we went, there was some sort of shower. Even if it was like in the jungle or whatnot, there was still yeah, cold water showers everywhere. Yeah. So I mean. Unless you're like super tetchy about everything. I would bother. Don't bother. We have a mini stretchable sticky hook washing line. I think this was actually pretty good. I'd say the only thing is I think Rose and I should have bought one each. We had one for both of us. Yeah. So <laughs> hanging up was hard because it only stretches a little bit. Um, and also the sticky pads aren't great. So we have come back a couple of times where we've hung it up in the tiles in the bathroom under the aircon and they've fallen off into a puddle of water making your clothes wetter than they were before trying to dry them. Yeah. But yeah, they've got hooks on them. You can hook them around on balconies and stuff. Super handy. I'll keep it. Super small. Yeah? Toilet roll. <laughs> and more tissues. So, some places are really good with toilet roll. Other places, not so good. So we used to start stealing toilet roll just in case we ran out or whatnot. And then these were brought for my sweating. So we're swiftly past that. Um, some hair bands, another hair band. A little rain cover for the bags. Come yeah. in handy sometimes. Yeah, that was about... Yeah, super cheap. Awkward. Yeah. yeah. Rain jacket. Yeah, we did need that Yeah. in Malaysia. Super cheap. I got this one for like a tenner, 15 quid. And... They're super handy. Um, use it quite a lot, quite thin, quite yeah. cheap, but definite go-to. Keep that. We bought these also. So they're like little cases for your phone when you go in the water. Never use them. We never use them. There's literally no point because you can leave your stuff on the beach and it's pretty much... As long as you, we just look at yeah. it from the water, we just keep an eye on them and you're fine. You don't need to, unless I guess maybe if you're somewhere that's, a bit more busy and you can't keep an eye on it as much but yeah we didn't need it didn't need that we're not people that need to take our phones everywhere anyway so it wasn't too much of a worry i'd say like we said earlier about the fold up um or spray bag that we bought the only good use uh we found for it was for washing it was super handy for laundrette runs um and stuff like that dropping off our dirty washing so we had a rucksack instead of having to carry a tote about so if you get a grab to say a laundrette in a country like that you can just stick it on your backpack and you're not holding on to the bike and your laundry you've just got it on your back and it's easy yeah uh like i said nintendo switch bin don't take no point <laughs> i thought you were saying put it in the bin i was like absolutely not no, no don't bother like unless you really think you're going to use it there's no no point. So we chose to use packing cubes and I'm still unsure whether I like packing cubes. I don't know if they made my bag bulkier or they made life easier, but with having such a small bag, it helped me get them in clothes. But then you're constantly opening packing cubes, getting stuff out, and you're having to like close them again, put them in the bag. I, I don't know if I'm a fan. I think if I had a bigger bag, I would have just gone raw dog or clothes in it i'm all for it i'm all for packing cubes i think it keeps it nice and organized i'd probably say don't get crappy ones so look let me give you an example so this is a really really cheap packing cube and sh like pretty much straight away holes so if you're going to do them do the uh, yeah like these ones. ones like these this that is tripped i think it is but they do compress loads 
Well, this one's not either. This is not a uh, branded one, but it does the compression, which is what you want. Yeah, you want it really tight. So these, it really does make a difference. It only seems like a tiny bit that it compresses, but when you're trying to get everything into your bag, yeah, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. For my all my clothes in the whole bag, I had two packing cubes. That was it. So not not much at all. So. It changed about how I had it organised, depending on what I needed, how, how many stuff I had to get in my bag. But this one at the moment is full of t-shirts, and then I had trousers, jumper, um, shorts, and underwear, all in this one. The biggest one I had, and it managed to be alright. What did you have in your, how many packing cubes did you have? I had four packing cubes, so I had one for tops, I had one for bikinis and socks, one for like leggings, my jumper, bras and knickers, and then the other one was shorts, trousers, dresses, skirts, whatever. Um, and it worked out really, really well. So like I said, I got four packing cubes. At the end, because I chucked out a few things, I ended up using what was my top packing cube as my laundry. Most of the time I put my laundry in here um but it wasn't really big enough and it made my back quite bulky so that's packing cube one packing cube two three four we had one bag of toiletries between us which conveniently had to go in my bag so this was actually a really nice bag before we went traveling it's super grotty now <laughs> but it was super handy to have just a clear place for everything. So in here we had stuff like giant bottle of conditioner. Um, a s stolen like cotton pads. And yeah, cotton pads, toothbrushes, sunscreen. Oh, combs. Combs like that. But just everything you need in there. We didn't put any medical in this, so this is just purely toiletries, vanity kind of stuff, yeah. toothpaste. When we originally went, we went with three sun creams and they lasted about three months, would you say? Yeah, but that's because I'm very pale, so I have to have like factor 50, I yeah. burn very quickly. Um, and yeah, it's a lot cheaper, so I would, yeah, buy, buy sun cream in England. Yeah, they're like super expensive and they also have whitening in it. Yeah. So it means that when you use it, rather than getting a tan, you're getting whiter, which is kind of the opposite of what, you know, us Brits who are pale want to get out of it. Yeah, and that's with the deodorant you buy out there as well. So you've got to be careful. So lots of them will have uh, pure or whitening on the label. Or brightening. Brightening, yeah and that's actually bleaching your skin. Yeah. So you want to be careful not to try and buy those really, unless you want super white armpits, I guess. Our first aid kit, it come in handy a few times, especially for me, you know, hurt myself quite a lot. Roughly what we have in here is, this is the bandage that I used for a while. We've got bug spray, we've got hydration tablets. I think maybe we took one of them at one stage when we in Changu, I'm pretty sure. Mm. And then antiseptic cream, Savalon. Uh, well, we ended up not using this because actual bite cream was much better. So don't bother about that. Then, you know, just normal things like soothers, we didn't use that and plasters and ibuprofen and paracetamols. All that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much it so far for what I had in my main compartment. Only thing I didn't like about this bag, it has this like little pouch here, I guess for shoes or little odd bits, but it just gets in the way, you don't really need it. I'd cut it out if I had another choice. Like I said in the top, I had that packing cube, and then in the bottom I had this little zip, and that just holds the rain cover, and you can also fit in, like sometimes I put my passport or um, the wet wipes, or just or random bits you can stuff into it. Then I've got this little purse and it just had, I mean, not that I wore any makeup or anything. I done it a few times right at the beginning, but it's got a bit of makeup and it's got a bit of accessories. So that's nice to have. A really good thing we brought, which was a 20 litre dry bag. 
Now these were really good for all of our snorkeling day trips. Um, anytime we had to get on a ferry, um, so if it's from a little island like Gilly Air or other places, some places you don't have a pier or a ferry and you've got to like wade into the boat. And so if you've got like us, cameras, laptops, phones, stick them all in this as you travel and you know at least if anything happens, your electronics are safe. Um, that was a good buy. I mean, it's quite big 20 litres. A lot of people uh, had like 10 or 15 litre ones, but for having both of our stuff, so like laptops and everything, it was, it was a good size. I think you should definitely invest in one of these. In terms of inside my bag, I'm like Charlie, it doesn't have a lot of pockets inside, but it does have pockets obviously in the top. We've got little compartments. You've got one on the side, so I ended up putting my, oh, there you go, bike cream. Uh, laptop in here quite a few times. And again, unlike Charlie's, the back of mine was a little bit more padded. So it was a bit nice to run my back. Originally, I didn't take many t-shirts. Uh, I took three, like just casual sports t-shirts, one shirt and one long sleeve tee. I also had another t-shirt, but I threw it out because it was grotty. But as you go, you accumulate lots more t-shirts. So I had like these three already, a shirt and a long sleeve. I'd say definitely take like a long sleeve for long journeys. It's just cozy. And then if you're uh, wanting to get out of the sun a bit as well. The shirt for me was something I'd like wore a lot because you could have it open or less buttons done up and it's looser and lighter than the t-shirts. But eventually, by the time we had got through, I got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, another eight t-shirts I accumulated along the way. Some of them being from places and some of them just being out of necessity. So I took three swim suits or bikinis. So one was a strappy one, one was high-waisted and kind of boob tube vibes. And then one was a full on swimsuit. And it's nice to have that because then it gives you like that even tan. Not that I have an even tan, but it gives you that opportunity. I'd say be careful in some of the water because one of mine is pretty ruined because of the chlorine. It's got this yellow tinge to it. The only problem I'd say is I didn't actually take um, some like smart, like linen or chino-y like black or grey shorts that worked with shirts or had anything that made you look kind of smart cash so anywhere we went I if I was wearing a nice shirt I'd still look really underdressed because I had like sports shorts on so next time I'd definitely take something I could dress up a little bit in. I would say just get a variety of everything so it gives you an opportunity to not feel like you're wearing the same clothes all the time I would most definitely suggest the Hollister pockets so i went for i know i didn't do any tennis but it was tennis clothings but they have pockets in inside of it and they are just brilliant because it can just place your phone and there's no need to be wary about someone stealing it because if they are then they're you know <laughs> what are they like <laughs> you know apart from that i took like 10 pairs of boxers and loads of pairs of socks um might have been a bit overkill, but you never know when you're going to shoot yourself, so. So we got little fleeces and they were so, so helpful when we went into a sea areas or anything. Like, even if we were in the room for too long and it started getting a bit chilly, it was like, all oh, really nice and cosy, just to put a fleece on. So just to summarise, I'd probably say you could probably go with nothing on your back and just buy everything out there. No. <laughs> I wouldn't say no. that. No, you need your essentials, sun creams, toothbrushes, toothpastes, uh, I'd take a, new, a good pair of shorts and a good pair of swimming shorts or a bikini that you really feel comfortable in and a good jumper from home that makes you feel like cosy. Okay, Everything so, so what I'll say is a little bag. Yeah, you could do. A little bag. You don't need to buy a big fancy bag. You don't need to have all your clothes sorted. You just end up spending more money than you need to because you can just buy everything there. But um, our six months definitely went a lot quicker than I thought. Uh, it does feel like a dream. So the plan 
from here on is we're going to be in England for the next six-ish months. So you might get a few videos of us around the vicinity area. And then we're off... On another adventure somewhere else. On another else, adventure somewhere else. Which we will keep you up to date with. And I'm sure we'll have a plan for that coming soon. And hopefully, with the, month, the time we're here, we'll actually earn some money and not spend it all. <laughs> and it will go towards our next uh, big trip. Yeah. But that's if, uh, fingers crossed, we get decent jobs. Yeah. You know? But there will be some videos about our routes and cost of everything and overall ideas and thoughts on each country and yeah budget route yeah like everything that. that we just feel it is important that may be wanting to know or yeah or not just our overall experience yeah it's about it mate hmm